Hello again. Some people, those working for left-wing newspapers like The Guardian, for example, are wringing their hands in anguish because the United Kingdom is cutting back on overseas aid. At the moment, we are giving away 0.5% of our gross national product. But the United Nations says that this should be 0.7% of our GMP, and they're calling us a bunch of skinflints and misers for limit, limiting it to 0.5%. From this, I think it's fair to assume that they and the people at The Guardian think that we should be giving India even more than the £55 million which they scheduled to receive from this country this year. Just to remind viewers, India is a nuclear power with submarines capable of firing nuclear missiles anywhere in the world. As well as having silos full of ballistic missiles, Hand in hand with developing nuclear missiles, India has been building space rockets. They've landed a probe on the moon and sent another into orbit around Mars. Within 18 months, they plan to send men into space, making them the fourth nation in the world to do so. Their space program is a damn sight more sophisticated and infinitely more expensive than Britain's own efforts in that field. Some of us therefore find it puzzling why, even with its slimmed down aid budget, the British government should wish to hand over £55 million to India for development. Just to put this in perspective, that £55 million for India would pay the salaries next year of more than 1,800 nurses in Britain. To put it another way, it would build 500 council houses. But no, we are so well off it seems that even at the time when people in Britain are being warned to tighten their belts as prices rise and the economy falters, we can afford to chuck around money like that. Even China has received £7.5 million from us this year. That is, China, the hideous dictatorship which is always acting against our interests and with whom we are at daggers drawn. I've said before that I do not object to being taxed by my local authority to pay for things like street lighting, fire brigade, um, rubbish collection, that sort of thing. I do strongly object, though, to being taxed by central government when they're going to send the money they collect from me to China and India. This is compulsory charity on an industrial scale. This year, the bill for overseas aid is £11,000 million. Yes, that's right, £11,000 million. That would be enough to pay the salaries of, for a year of nearly 400,000 nurses or build about 88,000 council houses. Anybody see anything wrong here? I'm not appalled at all opposed to individuals sending money to less economically developed nations. I do it myself and so do many other people. It is one thing for an individual to choose to spend his or her own money in this way, but I object strongly to the nationalised charity that the international aid that we give is in effect. In other words, the government takes our taxes and gives charity on our behalf, deciding for us which are worthy causes and which are not. I find this intolerable. Not only do I disapprove in principle as taken away my choice of whom I wish to help, governments are horribly inefficient when carrying out large-scale projects of this kind and spending huge amounts of other people's money. Just as nationalised industries mean waste and poor planning, so too with nationalised charity. A lot of that money being sent to foreign governments will be stolen and end up in the Swiss bank accounts of corrupt dictators. When I give money, I always make sure it's through a small charity with few overheads 
who will use every penny I give them for the cause for which I am donating. When the sums involved are hundreds of millions, people just sling it about like monopoly money. They can't possibly keep track of it. Human nature being what it is, it's inevitable that much of it will be wasted or stolen. I am particularly irritated to see such huge sums being distributed at the moment when the economic situation for so many people in Britain is so precarious. Does anybody think that homeless people in our big cities might be helped a little more and homes built for them? What about ex-servicemen down on their luck? As usual, I give a link in the description to this video to a few sources for what I am talking about this morning. Foreign aid is one of those bottomless pits, a bit like the National Health Service. However much money we pour into it, the demands will always be for an increased amount. Time I fancy to call a halt entirely for a while and think about what we are doing.